All right. So we'll continue our discussion with the eosinophil. So eosinophil once again part of the innate immunity. Innate immunity. It is a white blood cell. It is a granulocyte. It has granules which show up in its uh, cytoplasm. So here it is the uh, um, eosinophil um, bilobed nucleus. Normally not very well seen because many 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 cytoplasmic um, granules which pick up red color dye when dyed with the right stain. What do they have in them? We will talk about it and what is the role of the eosinophil? We will talk about that in a second. But the important thing is this that the eosinophil has the same uh, formation as is the basophil and is the neutrophil that is remember the myelocyte and the promyelocyte and um, metamyelocyte band and then the eosinophil. So the formation is the same. It takes up the basic proteins. Uh, so it has sorry it takes up the acidic dyes because inside the granule so if I make the granule here inside the granule there is a protein called major basic protein major basic protein in addition to that if you remember from our previous lecture for the basophil the this cell eosinophil is responsible for releasing histaminases to try to contain the histamine. It is also going to release aryl sulfate which would try to contain slow reacting substances of anaphylaxis or SRS leukotrienes and prostaglandins. So the, these are the things which are present in here. The basic function of the cell is really not established yet. The basic function of the cell is really not important, uh, not established yet. It is very important, sorry. The other thing is the, um, the population of this cell is also very low. So 0 0.01 to 0 0.3, so 0 0.01 to 0 0.3 multiplied by 10 to the power 9 per liter. So very, very small fraction. This fraction, this count can increase eosinophilia when we start loving the eosinophil and increase them. This count can increase in certain cases. For example, most important are parasitic infections or helminth infections or nematodes especially and then it could be increased in the allergic or asthmatic patients as well. So we will see what, what that means and how does that work. So the first thing is what we should cover about these. So we should cover how the helminths, helminths or nematodes are taken care of by the eosinophils. We should also know that what is ADCC antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity very very important concept and then we should see what is the effect of the eosinophil in asthma, asthmatic patients. And of course we know we just did the basophils and mast cells we should know the participation of the eosinophils in allergic reactions. So these three four things should be known. So once again very small fraction in the white blood cells normally not even seen by the uh, counting machines or even technicians sometimes they do show up and then we can have eosinophilia which in, in which case it would become even larger. The granules which are present they pick up the red dye or they pick up the acidic dyes the nucleus is bilobed and the, the major constituents of the granules the major mediators in there are number one is a major basic protein very important mediator then histaminases and aryl sulfate in addition to that there are peroxidases peroxidases and leukotrienes leukotrienes so keep an eye on these two guys because these are the ones which are going to cause tissue damage and cause allergic reaction and cause start the inflammation remember leukotriene b4 leukotriene b4 attracts the neutrophils, basophils and the eosinophils. So if you, if you give more leukotriene what is that going to do? Increase start the inflammation right. Similarly peroxidases are going to go and cause the tissue damage right. Myeloperoxidase is a very big thing for the leukotriene. So peroxidases are going to cause they are going to make reactive oxygen species which are going to cause tissue damage which in turn is going to cause inflammation. 
So these guys are actually supposed to be nice guys who would dampen the activity of the allergic cells that is mast cells in the basophils. But whenever they degranulate in that process they would also throw out peroxidases and leukotrienes which would actually increase the inflammation and cause a tissue damage. So not really, not very, very helpful. They, they try but they are not there yet. The basic function is still not known. Some people say that they, their function is really to dampen the allergic reactions. The others, the prevalent theme is that their function is to work with the larvae of the nematode and try to contain their uh, life in our bodies. So I, I always see it this way. So let's say this is a big worm larva in our body. So remember the children larva or the young larvae or the larvae of the nematodes, they will go in, into various tissues, into blood vessels and move around. So here are little microscopic cells of the WBC. Can you see them? You probably cannot see them. That is the point. These are little WBCs. These are microscopic things and you can see these larvae. So this is a giant for them. For these all the WBCs, these larvae is a giant. So imagine if tomorrow appears a giant in our city which is tall up to the skies. So now we are a little tiny cells trying to look up to that sea and, and figure out how to take care of that. So can you imagine that that plays out in our body? So how does our body take care of it? So have you heard of that old saying that if you want to kill a giant, giant what do you do? You have one cut per day, right? So you kill it by 1000 cuts. So here is what is going to happen. These white blood cells, the neutrophils, the macrophages, they are really so tiny and they are so helpless. They are not going to be able to do much to this giant. They cannot phagocytose it. Macrophage, that bad, badass dude, the neutrophil, that immediate reacting, reacting system, these guys cannot phagocytose this big giant. Right, so sometimes you think about the video games in which there is a small character and the big boss comes and that has gotten a huge big structure and you have to kill it one by one, right? It's the same thing, a video game is going on. So how does the eosinophil help in this thing? So for that what you have to understand is and do not forget this, I've seen this to be so many times in various question banks, the questions around the antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity, antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. What that means is this. So again, we have not yet done the acquired immunology. So we are not aware of how the antibodies exactly work, but the normal functions of the antibody is that antibody is going to try to bind with the antigen and neutralize it. Then antibody as we saw in our last lecture can bind on the surface of mast cells and cause allergic reactions. Then antibody when it is present in the complexes, it can help with the phagocytosis and that pathogen is eaten up by the neutrophil or the macrophage of the dendritic cell and killed or taken care of. This is a special case. So how does this work? What is ADCC? So how this works is this, that B cells make IgE. So remember this, this is a question what antibody would take part in ADCC? IgE. So IgE would go and connect on the surface of the nematode. Then the eosinophil has receptors on its body, on its surface for IgE, just like mast cell had. So eosinophil actually has for both IgE and IgG. In this particular case, it is IgE. Remember, this is IgE. Okay, so the mast cell, sorry, the eosinophil, that is going to appear here. Eosinophil is going to appear here. I'm making the nucleus red. That is okay. It should be blue. So here is the receptor for IgE, FC portion of the IgE, the tail part of the IgE. And now the eosinophil is connected to the IgE. Remember, it cannot phagocytose this larva. Macrophage cannot do that. Neutrophil cannot do that. So what are we going to do? Normal function of immunoglobulin is to allow phagocytosis. 
that's not going to happen here. This microscopic cell is not going to be able to eat up this larva. So what is it going to do? When this engagement occurs, that causes the second messenger system inside the eosinophil to become activated. Once again the calcium influx, once again the degranulation. So what happens is these vesicles which were sitting in, I'm making them green, they should be red, they, they come on the surface and the major basic protein is released. This major basic protein attacks the cuticle, so these nematodes have their cuticle thick skin, it attacks the skin and causes damage. And this is, remember these are really uh, very well formed worms, they have a complete GIT system, they have a mouth, they have an anus, they have a stomach, so these, these are really uh, little animals, they are animals, <laughs> anyways. So the major basic protein is going to go and attack their cuticle. When the cuticle or the skin is attacked, it develops big gaps in the skin, it, it causes damage to the skin. So imagine if some animal skin is continuously broken down, soon that animal is going to develop problems, the, um, the skin is peeled off, there are, it is open for attacks, plus the body is going to start spilling these substances out and the larva would hopefully die. So this is called antibody dependent because there is an antibody involved in this, antibody dependent cytocellular cytotoxicity. Cell is taking care in the cytotoxicity. This is not a natural killer cell, they do this, they are not antibody dependent, but they kill the cells. This is also not cytotoxic T cell, that also does this function of killing other cells. This is an eosinophil and it is not killing by doing some perforins or by doing apoptotic signals. It is killing this by degranulating the chemical substances.